Hello, and welcome to the M4OS Application Designer Series. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to widgets within the M4OS App Designer and walk you through building out a widget using an existing data service. So let's first define what exactly is a widget. Widgets are individualized functionality that can be used to display and process information on a homepage or workspace within M4OS Portal. We use these widgets to containerize a process or presentation of information that can be personalized by placing separate widgets on a homepage. M4OS App Designer is an application development framework. In this initial version of App Designer, you can build widgets to be used with OS Portal workspaces. Future functionality will be capable of building full applications and will aid in building extensions to enhance your M4 deployment. Widgets built with M4OS App Designer are exclusively used in the M4OS portal. Widgets take advantage of data services that utilize APIs contained in the API Gateway or objects in Data Lake. Those APIs are provided as access to all of the ERPs contained in the M4 family. So let's take a look at how we can build a widget using M4OS App Designer. Starting in the M4OS portal, I'm going to select App Designer from the OS landing page. On the left-hand side, you can see the Pages section, divided into Drafts, Published, and Archived. By default, the Drafts page will display showing you a list of existing widget drafts currently being worked on. The Publish section will display a list of widgets that have been published from the drafts into a published area. Published widgets are widgets that are ready to be deployed into the widget catalog, allowing for multiple versions of a widget. In today's example, we're going to create a new widget. From the draft section, select the New Page button in the top right. N4OS App Designer includes several different templates for use in the initial release. In the future, the number of templates are limitless and will be extended to fulfill any given scenario. For today, I'm going to select the Simple List widget. This will open up the Widget Designer, which is a wizard-type process that will step you through building out your widget. I'm going to give my widget a name for the header and call it Customer Listing. Below, I am given attributes that apply to this template, so I could potentially add an additional componentry on our template such as List Search, additional labels, hyperlinks, images, or badges. Under the Attributes panel, I'm going to turn on the List Search feature, the Hyperlink 1 component, and the Image component, and then click Next. I am then going to specify a file name, and optionally, I can add a description as well as any associated tags. Tags can be particularly useful for categorizing widgets when you're dealing with organizing large sets of widgets. I'm going to click Next, and in this example, I'm going to use an existing Mongoose data service called MET Customers. Data services can be any APIs that are available within the API Gateway, which could include external APIs, as well as APIs available for your M4 solutions. Using the search bar up top, I'm going to search for the keyword MET to find the data service I want to use. I'm going to click the Add button on the left to attach the data service to my widget. Notice after I select it that I will move to the Selected Data Service section on the right. I'm going to click Next to move to the Translatable Strings page. This template has no translatable fields, so there are no multilingual capabilities that can be done on this simple list. If I had selected a template with labels, the labels could be translated, allowing me to design in one language and display in another of the user's choice. Then I'm going to click Next, where I can now establish the bindings for my widget. I can select an element from the list on the left, or I can click on the component itself to do the assignment. Now, under the Data Properties section on the left, we can see a list of data properties or data fields contained within my API. I'm going to select Label 1 from the Elements list on the left, and under Data Properties, I'm going to bind it to the Name property. If I ever need a clear binding, I can use the X icon to remove it. Notice now that I have bound my property, you can see the component is now being populated with actual data from the data service. I am then going to select my Label 2 element and bind it to the Address Data property. Then I'm going to select the Hyperlink element and bind it to the Website Data property. When I select the Hyperlink element, notice now that I have additional options available. In this case, I can use the Configure Element button to configure the hyperlink. Hyperlinks can be static values that link to a website. 
It can also be a drillback link into a source ERP application. In this case, I'm just going to use a static website from the website source field. The value below will give you an idea of what the URL would look like. I'm going to set the source field to website and then click save. Then I'm going to select my image element and bind it to my image data property. All image types from IDM are supported and blob types from other ERPs like PNGs, JPEGs, and Base64 types are also supported. Using the icons at the top and at the right of the designer, I can see what my widget might look like if I were to resize it. Widgets within workspaces can be resized, so this allows me to preview what my widget might look like if I want to resize it in a workspace. Now that I have all my fields bound to data properties, I have a fully functional widget and can test it out using the preview button at the top. Once in preview mode, I can utilize the built-in search at the top to limit my customer results. I can also click on hyperlinks to view them in action. I'm going to exit preview mode by clicking the wizard button. Additionally, if I select the list element at the top, notice now that I have the option to add in context messaging. Context messaging allows us to send information from one widget to another. One widget can be set up to send the message and another widget can be set up to receive that message. A video on how to implement context messaging can be found in a future video, so be sure you are subscribed to the Info Technology YouTube channel so you don't miss it. Lastly, if I needed to go back and to make changes to the page properties, strings, data services, or page attributes, I can use the drop menu at the top to easily navigate between those pages. I'm going to go ahead and click the finish button at the top to complete the creation of my widget. A message will display notifying me that my widget has been created. I can use the ellipsis menu on the top right to edit, publish, launch, duplicate, rename, or to delete a widget. If I click launch, it will open the widget in a new tab for me to view it in runtime mode with actual data from the data service. This concludes today's video. In the next part, we will cover how to publish and deploy widgets to the widget catalog to be used in a workspace. To follow along, make sure to like and subscribe to the Infor Technology YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.